300, what is the deal? This is your folk shocker, the urban philosopher. And I wanted to share my thoughts with you all very quickly. So as y'all can see, this is uh, The Replacements Part 3. And I'm going to continue this series, y'all. Um, the purpose of this series going on is to give us a better insight into what is going on with these other groups of Africans outside, you know what I'm saying, of this country, all right? So that we have a better understanding of why they are most definitely not in a position, okay, uh, to speak on us the way that they do, okay? And also, why you see a lot of jealousy that's coming from their side. All right. So that is why I'm making this video today. This is going to be part three. I came up on this video here, and it backs up a lot of what I was saying about what is going on with these people over there, like uh, socially and economically. Okay. I mean, this is the truth behind these people. Like I say, the ones that's here, they're not a representation of what's going on uh, in the places that they come from. But anyway, they're going to uh, discuss the unrest uh, that is going on um, in South uh, Africa over here. All right. Now, they initially try to make it seem as if they were act acting up because, you know, their uh, corrupt president was arrested and sentenced to time in prison. But you find out that it has more to do with the economic situation over there, okay, and how they are being treated socially. So let's just listen in, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop, you know, in certain places I'm going to speak on uh, the video. But let's get into it. Picking up the pieces after the July unrest that hit Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, and businesses that were affected by the unrest should stay and rebuild, especially now that there is aid. That is the message from Business Unity South Africa. This after Treasury gave the state-owned insurer Sasria close to 4 billion rand to help settle insurance claims. I think compliments must be given to this ANC-led gap. One, because they have given this package of almost four billion to Satria, a state-owned entity, the only one, by the way, there are very few, um, if any, anywhere else in the world. But number two, for saying even those small and medium enterprises that are not insured, here's a package where we want you to rebuild so that you can continue to create jobs and therefore stimulate economic growth. Okay, so let me stop right there. Okay, so... Basically, he is pleading with foreign powers, okay, to keep businesses in South Africa, okay, so that they have an economy. Okay, y'all, now I find that strange and funny <laughs> that in their own home that possesses the resources that can, that cannot live, the world cannot live without these resources. You know, a lot of the things that we're doing. They are pleading with powers who come from lands, okay, that have, that's nowhere near as resourceful, okay, to keep their businesses there so that these indigenous Africans are able to have jobs <laughs> and feed themselves, okay? All right, you got it? <laughs> okay, I got it. Let's move on. Lastly, we are saying it's human nature. You know, when we have been collectively traumatized, like we have been as a people, especially around the 19th of July, those two weeks in July, and we have caused so much destruction and mayhem and general fear. When you are paid out as a small and medium enterprise, 10 million rand, some 30 million rand, it's easy for you to say, am I going to go through the same pain again in that same uncertainty, especially because both the systemic and systematic events that led to this rampant looting have not been fundamentally addressed. Maybe let me take the money and run. We have seen. 
Okay, so basically he is using the same played out talking points that is used over here, okay? By a lot of the uh, liberal tap dancers, so-called blacks put up front. So basically the government has paid out the business owners that lost property from the rioting and looting, okay? Now, as I said before, they are begging them to stay and also consider the fact that this happened in the first place because they were not being civil with the indigenous Africans, okay? So basically he is saying that it would be a good look, okay, for businesses and South African people if these foreign powers would pander and care more about South Africans, okay? <laughs> of people who have been oppressed in their own home because of their own decisions, okay? Give me a break, man. But let's keep on moving. But hold on, let me say something. Because you know, these same people, right? <laughs> Stay in their gifted situations over here, speaking bad about us, looting and doing all of these things over here I don't co-sign either, but like I said, y'all, I'm making this to dispel the whole, they're in a position to speak because they have Wakanda in Africa, okay? This is something that must be exposed, y'all, but let's get back to it. 140,000 South Africans immigrate since the right, so that's why we are saying to business people to urgent... Okay, so basically it's so bad there that like 140,000 Africans are just leaving due to economic issues and social issues going on. Okay? Alright. Mama Africa. Let's get back to it. South Africans, this is the only country we have. We are a resilient bunch. Yes, we have pulled up to the precipice, but let's pull back. Let's rebuild. Let's rebuild those malls. Because that's how we can have both an outsized and oversized impact in terms of jobs and thereby create the long-term um, resilience that is needed whilst we ensure that we are sustainable in the short term. <clears throat> okay, uh, so like I said before, he is urging these foreign people and powers not to leave because South Africans need them in order to build their own home. Okay, so all these smart guys over here uh, in America that are from Africa and things like that, they're not calling them over there to come together so that they can do this thing independently, all right? And this is the same stuff, y'all, that went on on the shoreline in the beginning, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And this is all based on a lot of bad decisions they made, okay? They put themselves in this position. But let's keep on listening, because it's about to get real juicy. Some some facts about to come out here. Let's listen in. Bruce has also urged business owners not to take their organizations elsewhere, but to create employment uh, for the youth. So firstly is to say to Mike Nguna, who's lost tumors. When the insurance money pays, it might be so easy for you to go back uh, to Limpopo and say, let me just consider my retirement. But remember the 3,000 people that are at the end of fire mall and think about them. And some of the levers we want to pull simply say, as patriots, using our voice loudly and judiciously, Imagine when we can rebuild within a year. But 60% of the 60.1 million South Africans are 35 years and younger. And yet unemployment to them is 74.9%. Totally, we're talking about 11.9 million people that are not employed. But okay, let's stop there. <laughs> let's stop there. So basically, y'all heard it. 74.9% unemployment, y'all. So you might ask, how does this happen? How does this even happen? Okay. Basically, these corrupt leaders 
And a lot of these tribal leaders over there and stuff like that, they like claim to a lot of these lands with resources and stuff. They make bad, selfish, political, and economic deals with foreign powers now. And once they get in, they push Africans aside, okay? They ship a lot of their people in, and they open up shops, okay? It has been like that for a very long time, and it's only getting worse, all right? Like I explained to y'all, these are the same deals they made on the coast when it all started, okay? How do y'all think apartheid started? And you know, the African man who likes to brag on being the first man and, and all that, you know what I'm saying? He never fought a war in modern times to protect his land and his valuable resources. Okay, they don't even have a Rosewood moment, y'all. Okay? But at least they have family, right? Okay? All right, but let this gentleman uh, tell you how that's working out. All right? Young people in particular, 10 million, are not in employment, education, or training. Six million young people don't know their fathers. Only 30% of households have both a mother and a father. So I think let's be... Okay, so y'all heard that there. All right? Most of their young over there is not educated. Okay? But let's just get to this other part. They like to talk about how uh, a lot of the African men like to criticize brothers over here talking about how we're not fathers and we're not involved in our children's lives and we are a disgrace to African men and things like that. They love to say these type of things. You know what I'm saying? But over there, all right, only 30% of the youth over there know their father have a two-parent home y'all heard it there okay like i say the african is major with throwing the black man under the bus for not being a family man okay the truth is that most likely okay the case in these countries where people of african descent dominate and they possess more culture this is most this is more likely than over here comparing the ratio all right but they like to talk about you know what i'm saying our family structures and things like that <laughs> i mean i mean listen i don't know y'all maybe i'm in the major <laughs> y'all tell me you know but then when you continue to listen to him, he's sitting up here telling uh, foreign people, these foreign powers, that they need to show more respect for the youth. That the African man over there, in his own home, with all the most valuable resources and herbs, you know, I was following the sister on this channel. She even said herself she's going over to Africa for all the rare herbs and things like that that a lot of these foreign countries try to get in there to get. Truth is, they don't get sneak in there or anything. They just walk in there. But she was saying that on the side note. But in this place, the African man over there apparently cannot provide this respect and these opportunities, okay? that they are begging these foreign powers to provide for their youth, okay? It's just crazy, you know? But let's just listen to the end of this. And that on young people, because they are going to spend their time heavily invested in the future where they are going to really be wanting to do something in finding their own usefulness. I think we need to take a risk as business in young people because there's a problem right then when your own employees cannot afford the goods and services that you provide and the future is young and the future is female there is no doubt about that because 51 percent of the population is female okay so let's just go ahead and leave it there but as y'all can see basically after Okay, the African people and who people who run the place's eyes got out of line 
he is trying to sell the idea that basically pandering and being more nice will help both sides as I said before okay if they are not being corrupt over there this is what the African man is doing over there in his own home okay so the next time y'all hear these things or see these things y'all just keep these things in mind okay but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there y'all <laughs> all right i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there y'all go ahead and drop y'all opinions in the comment section below you know what i'm saying let me know what y'all think about what's going on over there in africa and do you all feel as if africans uh you know have the room to speak as crazy as they do about us okay or do you think they need to be more focused on what's going on in their own lands and get their own self together you know what I'm saying? Let me know below, y'all. Like or dislike this information. But most definitely hit that bell. Because I'm going to drop something that you're going to like, alright? Anyway, y'all, this is your folks, Shaka, the Urban Philosopher. I am out. It's 300.